Are you willing to invest the next year in healing from the fear that you sold into your your wife's heart until she can she can heal from it? And are you willing to confront fear in yourself? Are you ready to stop fighting and start loving again? What if I told you that the key to connection and harmony in your marriage can be found at the intersection of law and compassion? I'm Shar, founder of Law for Love, the most special place in the legal system in Atlanta, where we use the power of law to promote love for healthier families, stronger communities, and love that transforms the world. I'm here to share a word of insight and a word of encouragement in response to a Reddit post. Link is in the description box because we don't always understand the impact of our words. And this uh, 32-year-old husband told his 32-year-old wife, they've been married seven years, um, things were great. They bought their house two years ago. They bought a house big enough for them to grow their family, but life started lifing. Uh, they began having some financial problems and some challenges. The types of things that come to test us, that come to challenge us, that come to help us find who we really are under pressure. And this husband came to his wife and, and had a conversation about finding a solution to the financial problems. Either we need to sell the house or we need to start making more money. And he went on his journey of finding more money, of getting a better paying job. And some time had gone by and no movement on her side. Even after she had asked her boss for a raise, she was re disrespectfully rejected according to how he's interpreting the situation. And in the middle of a conversation about the finances, he lost it and he made the comment to her, I won't be as stressed next year because we won't be together. So one of the things that happened to me as a divorce attorney was the lack of sensitivity I I developed around the the destructive force of the word divorce or the implication of divorce for someone who was working in in hundreds of clients per month talking about divorce I became callous to what that word means to people on the other side of that decision or on the other side of that threat or on the other side of that suggestion. I was so reckless with the commonality of the word divorce that during, during my, my eight year stint as the runaway bride in my marriage, where I literally fantasized every Friday about not going home and, and just serving my husband with some divorce papers and starting my life all over. When I had determined that I would be happier by myself, like I, I didn't even want, I didn't even want someone else. I, being in divorce, I knew that the grass wasn't necessarily greener on the other side. It's not that you necessarily married the wrong person and that by divorcing this person, you're going to find the right person. I, I, I saw too many horror stories of that from my practice to fall for that trap. So instead, what I decided was that I'm going to go ahead and just be happier by myself. I don't even want a man. It's too much work. I'll be happier going and just adopting a hundred kids and being an old lady in the shoe. Like this was literally my thought process. Why I wanted a divorce. So I want to challenge you 
husband who used this language with your wife based on what literally recently happened in my own marriage. A year ago, I got involved with some business dealings that were substantial, like very um, significant. And the way that I went about doing it, my husband was as responsible as I was responsible. So we both had an equal amount of blame or an equal amount of responsibility for how things took place. And when I told him about the deal that I was involved in, about its reach and its impact, about how uh, incredibly complex and complicated it was, he lost it. He lost it because he was infuriated that I would get involved with something that's such a big deal and not tell him about it or not consult him about it before doing it. Again, I'm not here to blame him for how I moved because he had a part of responsibility in that and I played a part and it was equal. Both of us played a role in that. My husband was so hurt in the moment that he actually asked me for a divorce. He literally asked me for a divorce. And for the first time in our marriage, the idea of divorce actually, it actually hit home. It hit home. But I made peace with it because I understood where he was coming from. And I was willing to own my responsibility for why he made that request, why he came for me like that. And I want to say that same night, it was probably that same evening, maybe the next day, maybe the next day. I had relocated myself to my office and all of my all of my stuff moved it out of the bedroom and I began doing what I do which is problem solving and figuring out my life because that was definitely not the first time I had ever been in a situation where I have to start planning a move on the drop of a dime, right? And and there's a long backstory to that, but I'm not I'm not going to get into that right now. And so I began getting busy doing what I do. And that conversation it didn't erupt into yelling and screaming. It didn't it it, it was it was I want a divorce. I was stunned and I shrugged it off and I began taking measurable actions in the direction of figuring out how to separate from my husband and live separately. Well, two nights later, it was, it was the following day. Two nights later, I was up late working right here in my office and my husband came downstairs and he said that he had the most bizarre encounter from the Lord who told him that I'm trying to think of exactly how he put it. The Lord told him that there were so many things that he had done 
to deserve to be discarded or thrown away. And it was like a how dare you moment. In light of who you are, how dare you? That was the that was like the the encounter my husband described that he had, the spiritual encounter. And he came downstairs and he apologized. And he asked me if I would be willing to work work things out and us figure out what went wrong and how to get back on track. When I mean, we had been doing pretty well for a few years, especially compared to the first eight years of our marriage, which was extremely tumultuous. We had been doing pretty well up until that point. So I agreed and I didn't pay close attention to what happened in my heart. I just kind of pushed past it. I, I kind of did the I'm a big girl thing. And um, just went about the business of let's figure this out and let's continue working on our relationship. And we have been doing that very civilly for the past year. In fact, we um we began evolving into friendship again in ways that I I hadn't remembered being friends with my husband for more than oh my gosh like since our <laughs> engagement period the first 2 years of our marriage we hadn't been friends since we married and at this point at at, at this time that I'm recording this we have been married 15 years We've been together 17. We've been married 15. <clears throat> and we're working things out. We're doing things that work. We're finding friendship and we're communicating well because we had learned some, some skill sets that really, really improved our communication. And um, strange thing happened. Strange thing began to happen where... My my finger that I wear my, my wedding band on, it was like it had some kind of, the, the, the best way I could describe it is like a, a eczema. And, and it was only on my ring finger. I would wake up in the middle of the night and it would be inflamed. And I was doing all manner of stuff to, to kind of get this thing under control and all kind of stuff. And I, I explained to my husband that I had to take my wedding band off and I showed him my hand and what was going on so that he would know that, you know, I'm not just not wearing my ring because of some emotional reason. Like I, I physically could not wear my, my wedding ring. And um, those several months, several months, I would say about nine months, somewhere between six to nine months, my finger was inflamed. And I shared this with a couple of my friends because I'm and I'm a very spiritual person. Like I know that everything that is happening in the physical world, it originates in the unseen world. Like I'm looking for what's the spiritual, what's the underlying spiritual issue. I, I have learned that when you deal with the spiritual side, the spiritual side resolves the physical side. So I had gone on some soul searching and really trying to find it out. Is it him? Is it me? You know, what what type of conflict exists inside of me? Why I can't wear my wedding ring and only my ring finger is inflamed. And um, several months ago, we had uh, an opportunity for another heart to heart, a seasonal heart to heart. And I, I made the decision that I was going to show up in a more loving and more compassionate space 
when it came to things about my husband that was driving me crazy. And, I, and I've, I've been studying this and, and really meditating on this a lot. And when I began to dive a little deeper, what I, I didn't realize as I was doing this work uh, in the area about the things that I'm afraid of, the things that he's afraid of, and beginning to see what is making him afraid and showing up for him differently rather than defensively, but showing up for him more compassionately because the way we express fear is different. Everybody looks a little different. You will see your spouse as being defensive. You'll see your spouse as attacking you. You'll see your spouse as being aloof or avoiding you. But what's really happening a lot of times when we're having these clashes, some kind of fear is coming in to disrupt the flow of love. Fear is a love and harmony disruptor. And every single one of us, we have it. And if we don't deal with the fear problem, we will always have issues in our intimate spaces. Fear is an intimacy killer. When I began to do some, some very deep work in the area of fear, dealing with my own, looking at his, responding to him differently when, when I thought he was just being a jerk when he's just being difficult or argumentative, but, but actually kind of like perceiving what is he afraid of here? I did not notice that my finger began to heal when I began to deal with the, the fear problem. And what I realized this morning Yesterday was the first time I was able to put my, my ring on most of 2024. I have been unable to wear my wedding band. This morning I realized we were both afraid. He was afraid that I was making moves that were going to harm him. I was afraid that he was making moves that were going to harm me. And neither one of us were dealing with the fear problem and what was manifesting in my wedding band finger was fear and uncertainty about my marriage and the future of my marriage. I didn't realize that I was pushing down fear that took root in my heart as a direct result of him asking for a divorce and how much that word incites fear in people. We easily describe the things we experience in marriage as hurtful. Uh, we get angry. We get angry and we get hurt or we're happy and we're joyous or we're happy and we're peaceful. But we rarely take the time to look at what we're afraid of. And sometimes rather than coming to our spouse and saying, Hey, I'm afraid. Here's what I'm thinking, and I just want to let you know what my state of mind is. I just, I'm not even asking you to fix it. I'm just, I just want you to know that I'm afraid. And then helping one another deal with the fear problem, punch fear in the eye, take fear down and cast fear out of your house. Like this is literally a, a, a biblical law, cast fear fear out and you will find perfect love. That's, that's the law. Your wife is probably very, very afraid right now. 
And if she's like most people who are confronted with the D word, then she's talking to people who are telling her, you should go call a lawyer and find out your rights. How do I know that? Because most of the phone calls I got in my, my old divorce practice, it was everybody telling the client to call a lawyer. <clears throat> because that's what people do when they love you and they want to see you do well and they don't want to see you get hurt. They tell you to go protect yourself. And to most people in today's society, protecting yourself means calling a lawyer. My challenge to you, 32-year-old male husband, I see that you're regretful for what you said. I see that you're crying out for advice and answers. And here is my challenge to you. Are you willing to invest the next year in healing from the fear that you sold into your, your wife's heart until she can, she can heal from it? And are you willing to confront fear in yourself? Yesterday was the first day I was able to wear my wedding band. It, it, it's had to be nine months now. Because I wasn't dealing with the fear. I was being my regular logical lawyer self. And just dealing with the business at hand. Of making my decision that I'm with my husband and we're going to figure it out. But I never dealt with the fear that he sowed in my heart when he asked for a divorce. And that thing manifested itself. Until I began to deal with me. And until I began to shed off the layers of resentment towards him that took root in that hole of fear that he placed in my heart with that word. Nothing changes for the better in anyone's marriage until divorce is completely taken off of the table. Nothing will go anywhere if anyone is reserving the option of divorce. If you are keeping divorce somewhere tucked in the back of your mind as your escape hatch, if this goes too bad for me to handle, I'm out. If Either one of you has divorce as an option. You might as well just go ahead and do it. That word is a weed in the garden of your marriage. It robs the soil of your mind and your emotions and your connection. It robs it of the nutrients needed for fruit to grow I like mangoes and I, I my garden is a big old mango tree whatever kind of tree you imagine yourself to be the your favorite fruit think of your marriage as that garden and when you have your tree and you're expecting it to give you Mangoes or oranges or apples or pears. But all it's giving you is thorns. I want you to understand that the word divorce. Is like pouring battery acid. On the soil where that tree is planted. It's like killing your own harvest. And my prayer for you and for your wife is that you will both find the courage 
to punch fear in the eye and throw fear out of your house. And that you are both willing to do the work to heal that soil where the storms of life have come in and blown blown limbs off of your tree where tornadoes have come and got your tree leaning to the side where the battery acid was poured in that you you begin digging that out and rehabilitating the soil I pray courage for both of you to do that work I'm a marriage minister and it took me a whole year to rehabilitate my heart after the divorce word was planted there. I'm someone who does this work. I, this is my work. This is my livelihood. And it took me a year. And I know what time it is. I've done this work. I walk other people through healing. And for your wife, it may take her the next year. But it can be done. You can rehabilitate the soil of your marriage. You can cast fear out of your house. And you can be friends again. And you will, if you do it together, you will weather this storm. And finances do not have to come between you. It is such a word of betrayal. And if I have to be completely honest, I had sown that seed into my marriage. There are two distinct times I can remember coming home with a set of divorce papers and giving them to my husband. I planted that tree in the first place. That weed in my marriage. So what happened last year. Was me personally experiencing the trauma. That I inflicted on my own husband. And now a year later. I'm healed to the point where I got my ring back. I know that you're afraid of financial ruin. I know that you're afraid that y'all are not going to make it. I know that you're afraid that you're not going to be able to fix this. Maybe you're afraid that you're going to fail somehow. But I'm here to let you know that there's nothing you and your wife can agree to that will fail you if y'all agree to do it. Anything the two of you agree to do, you will accomplish. Please take courage. And be willing to invest the patience and the care the same way you would for a dying plant. Because she can come back. Those roots can heal. She can be restored and you can find friendship again. Because when I tell you, when I tell you this year has been the most connected year for me and my husband. Since we married 15 years ago, we've been more friends than ever in our marriage. And I didn't realize that I was afraid to be his friend. And he was afraid to be mine. Because we had been hurting each other. And afraid of being vulnerable with each other. And every marriage goes through it. Every marriage goes through it. So accept her for who she is. Understand that she's afraid right now. Understand that that's going to take some time to heal. But it is healable. And it will, 
it will work and it will take root to the extent that you deal with the fear problem. And you partner with her to face her fears and overcome her fears, to take courage. That is my prayer and my advice for you. And I pray peace into your situation. I pray peace for your wife, wherever she is. I pray that the sound of love drowns out the sound of fear. And that you both turn to each other to rebuild and reconstruct your relationship. Knowing that your enemy isn't the finances, your enemy isn't her, her enemy isn't you, but the enemy of your marriage is fear. I pray you take courage and that all will be well with you and your wife. Thank you for joining me for this journey and for allowing me to be a part of yours. For more information, please visit lawforlove.com or follow us on social media at lawforloveatl. I love you.